Well, talk about ironic. Look at this section. Creating a comprehensive office policy that addresses sexual harassment and the complaint process. All right? So it has, it's important that you know that sexual harassment doesn't necessarily need to involve bosses and employees. It can involve any party in a position of power. So maybe you have a training director, maybe you have a transaction coordinator, maybe you have a, you know, a, an office manager that manages one of the office. A broker can be liable if the prospective buyer or sales associate harasses the secretary. That could also be. You should have known about the problem and taken steps to correct it, all right? So you might have a receptionist and one of the agents is constantly harassing the receptionist. Once again, cross-gender or intergender, meaning same sex, different sex, doesn't matter. The bad news is that courts have recently expanded their employer liability to the acts of employees in supervisory roles. Courts now look at whether the behavior constitutes harassment under Title VII than whether the plaintiff actually suffered adverse employment actions such as termination, demotion, undesirable reassignment, decrease in benefits, or failure to be promoted. So brokers are liable whether or not they knew about it or not because you should have known and it's up to you to stop it. As the boss, and I'm using finger quotes, it is up to you to know this. So you should have a comprehensive plan. Now, the good news is if you can limit this ability or your liability by demonstrating that the company exercised reasonable care to prevent or correct problems prior to them actually happening. All right? So if you can reduce your liability, I didn't say eliminate, by the way, I said you can reduce your liability by making sure that you have established a sexual harassment policy and distribute it to every employee and independent contractor. You have a signed statement from employees and independent contractors that they have read the policy. I'm telling you now, that one form right there will save you a lot of problems. It has saved my butt one time a long time ago when we had an office policies and procedures manual, I had an employee, actually independent contractor, who got in trouble, wasn't sexual harassment, it was a completely separate issue. But one of the policies that we had said that the minute, the minute she violated uh, any lawful law, she was no longer associated with our company. And she signed off saying that she read the policies and accepted them. Well, when she committed a crime, that immediately terminated her uh, agreement with us. And she was no longer acting on my behalf. And when they actually got to the point of the court case, yes, my company got sucked into the court case. But we showed the fact that she signed off on the policies and one of the policies said when she uh, created an illegal activity, she was no longer employed by us. The judge actually released us from the court case. Did not get subjected to her final hearing, which in essence was a $60,000 judgment. And I believe they terminated her license at the state level. I still paid for an attorney, but got removed because of this one line where she signed a document saying she read the policies. So if you have a policies and procedures manual and you hand it out to your independent contractors, that's cool, that's good, but you better get something back from them saying, signing saying they read it and they understand it, all right? We do it all the time now. You guys do read the terms of agreement, right? when every website says you agree to the terms and click the checkbox, you read those before you check it, all right? That's why they do that. That way the, an attorney can't go, well, yeah, you gave them a handbook, but they really didn't read it, so they're not liable. No, they signed a document, which I have in my file, that says, you know, 
Bob read the policy and it says we have a clause in there about sexual harassment. All right. So make sure that you're clear to everyone that you don't tolerate sexual harassment. Reinforce this message routinely at periodic training and encourage other agents to come forward with complaints. This comprehensive program that you can adopt as a real estate brokerage or as an office manager or even potentially as a team leader is going to go a long way in helping reduce the potential liability that you should have known better. All right. So write that policy. You can have an attorney write it. I am almost 100% guaranteed you could probably even Google a policy and get one and tweak it to fit your needs. Make sure that you give it to all your agents. Make sure you have them sign something saying they understand it. Make sure that you every once in a while in your training repeat that policy. Hey, you know, we don't condone this. And I suggest if the, you have been harassed, come see me in private and let's take care of it. All of these steps and measures you can take to reduce your potential liability in any unwanted sexual harassment lawsuit.